later. What could you have? I've overcome the flow, learned to take it well. I only wish my words could just convince myself that it just wasn't real. But that's not the way it feels. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Another review, another Moon Man Mad John copy of a famous pen. I got this Mad John T5 piston filler a couple of months ago and I've held off doing a review because I've had so many Moon Man Mad John clones. I was thinking I'd have to change the name of my channel to send in the clones. Need the clone! Oh, blimey, I thought I smelled cabbage. I've had the RS1 clone of the Caveco Sport. The A1 clone of the Pilot Vanishing Point, the TI-200 clone of the Parker 51 Flighter, the Moonman F9 clone of the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir, the Moonman P135 clone of the Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince, and of course there is the M600 clone of the Parker Duofold Centennial and the M800 clone of the Leonardo Momento Zero. Uh, that's a lot of clones. We could have a clone war. Begun. Clone so I let a couple of weeks go by before returning to the Clone Wars with this Mad John T5 piston filler. This is a clone of the Aurora Optima. When I bought the T5, I knew it was mimicking something, but I didn't know what. If it is a new model from Mad John, it's copying something, that's for sure. A quick search on the interwebs, and I was hip deep in virtual gnashing of teeth from Aurora lovers. <laughs> I don't own an Aurora pen, but I'm sure they're marvelous because they are, well, incredibly expensive. And we all know that the higher the price, the higher the quality, and the lower your bank account for food, heat, shelter, all those things that don't matter too much if you can afford an Aurora. And I'm looking at you, Rudy. Here's an Aurora Optima from Goulet Pens, priced at $535.50 US. Or, uh, let me calculate that in Canadian funds. A gajillion dollars. <laughs> that amount of money doesn't even exist. That's like saying, I want a gajillion bajillion dollars. <laughs> of course, that pen has a 14 karat gold nib. You can see that the Madge on T5 isn't just vaguely inspired by the Aurora, but actively copying everything from the section to the ink window. So let's take a look and see if this Aurora clone is worth the roughly $500 US savings in price right now. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, the pen has a lacquer covered metal cap and barrel with black plastic finials. The hardware is chrome finished metal and the entire pen is subsequently relatively heavy at about 34 and a half grams. From the top we see a black plastic conical finial and then a chrome metal ring which holds the clip in place. The pilot style ball clip is nicely springy and usable. The cap has this lovely ink splatter kind of pattern in what looks like a sort of a sparkly blue that's embedded in that lacquer on both the cap and the barrel. The cap curves slightly up to a large chrome metal cap band that has a rib design and Madge on in big letters stamped into it. The end of the cap band has a slight chamfer that angles down to the barrel which is straight until about the middle where it tapers away to another chrome metal ring which separates the barrel from the black plastic piston knob which has a matching conical end. I will show how the piston operates when I disassemble this pen shortly. The cap unscrews with one, two, and about a quarter turns to reveal a large black plastic tapering section and a very generous transparent ink window and a number six size medium steel nib. The section is a nice size and very comfortable with a large ring-shaped flare towards the end towards the nib. 
The cap threads are smooth and the transition to the clear ink window very smooth uh, to the point it actually increases the grip area, which is a plus. Let's take a closer look at this nib. This is not the nib that came with this pen. This is the nib that came with my pen. And you can see it's a generic Chinese steel number no. six size nib. So my T5 didn't come with a box or even the Moonman nib. I see other T5s uh, that have Moonman branded nibs. Obviously, my retailer pulled the nib and substituted this generic one. I have no doubt he's selling the Moonman nibs separately on his store, so I'm a tad disappointed in him for this downgrade. The nib I did put into this pen is from the same retailer, and it is a calligraphy nib in the Naginata Togi style. The nib and feed are not part of an unscrewable nib assembly collar, but are friction fit. I was able to pull it out easily and replace it with this Bobby calligraphy nib. I'll talk about that when I get to the writing samples. Inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner that also has the cap threads in it. That means that the threads are plastic on plastic, which is much better than plastic on metal. The cap posts securely, but not very deeply. And with the cap weighing in at close to 13 grams, it does back weight that pen slightly, but also makes the pen very long. And so I write with it unposted. Unposted, the pen is nicely balanced and comfortable in the hand with that nice girthy and long section. The pen weighs about 22 grams unposted, and so it's nicely balanced and comfortable. It's a real pleasure to write with, even for long writing sessions. If the Aurora is shaped like this, I can see why people love them. And as the Aurora is made of resin, not metal, and only weighs 22 grams in total, I bet it's a nice writer. If you have an Aurora Optima, let me know what you think of the pen in the comments. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. I bought this pen from Bobby's AliExpress shop called St. Pen PPS Chinese Pen Store for $27 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Majon T5 piston filler with a Pelican M800 piston filler, a Narwhal Nautilus piston filler, a Narwhal Porpita, piston filler, and a Pen BBS 309 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Nautilus doesn't post, and although the others do, only the Pelican and the Pen BBS are able to be used posted, in my opinion. The Pelican M800 is one of the best posting pens on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Now before I inked this pen, I did a video showing how to completely disassemble it and then I inked it on camera. So let's look at that, and then I'll be back with some measurements. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a disassembly of this pen, since it is a piston filler, and since my tool for the Wingsong 699 works on the Majon T5 as well. Also, since I've been writing with this pen for a few weeks now, but I've been writing with it with the Bobby Calligraphy nib that I got and uh, I quite like it uh, but this is the original nib that came with the pen I'm quite surprised it's not a Moonman nib that's on there but anyway let's take the pen apart uh, since I'm going to re-ink the pen anyway uh, with this new Ferris wheel press stroke of midnight so we're going to open up the piston all the way we're going to put our wrench on that flatted spot and it fits perfectly but then holding the wrench and the pen we're going to clamp the piston knob back down on the wrench so it holds it in place and then we're going to turn the barrel we're going to hold the wrench and turn the barrel in the anti-clockwise direction because the threads are reversed left hand threads and You'll see that just slides right out there, and there's the piston. That down. And then this end of the pen, that nib and feed unit is friction fit in there. I'm just using a bit of um, shelving material, light rubber, around the nib, around the shoulders of the nib here, so I don't squish the feed. Now push my knuckles together, 
and the whole thing just slides right out and there we have the body of the pen so I can flush that with water and I can grease the piston while I'm there I get a little bit of silicone grease on there just a little dab will do you I'm going to put that back in the piston rotate the piston a little bit push it in and out get that grease in there then I'm going to turn the body in the opposite direction my wrench is still attached until it is hand tight and then that piston will come loose and the wrench will fall off and then we're good to go the nib and feed back together again I line it up so that the edges of that feed right where the curve of the tines happen right there and I hold the whole thing together with my thumb and forefinger this has a, a flatted side on it and there's a key right there that's the flat spot right there line those up and the whole thing just pushes right in and there we go and we're ready to ink the pen and here we are ready to ink the pen up so we're gonna open that piston knob which moves the piston all the way to the end and we're gonna put the nib all the way down into the section you have to watch about displacement especially when the ink bottle is full because it'll push ink right out of there then I'm going to close the piston knob back down again all the way down and it'll push any air that was in the nib and rotate the piston the other way we're sucking up ink you can see through that ink window so I can see my ink level but if you want to fill up the pen even more I'm gonna turn the piston open while pointing the nib up and that air will bubble up through that feed until it's mostly liquid there now I got a dome of ink so most of that air is gone now see that's just ink now so now I go back into my bottle of ink with that piston that's slightly open and close that uh, back down again which sucks up the remaining bit of ink and so now yeah, that ink window is fairly full. And we're ready to write. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Magon. T5 piston filler and currently it is sporting a number six size steel calligraphy nib that I purchased from Bobby's AliExpress store that I mentioned earlier I did do a writing sample with the generic nib uh, with which my T5 was shipped that nib was horribly misaligned and even when I fixed the alignment, it was very scratchy. I worked for about 30 minutes on the nib and got it writing satisfactorily, uh, but it was a wasted effort as I still chucked it for the Bobby calligraphy nib. And here is that writing sample right now. Uh, you can see that the pen was very, very wet, but it was very, very scratchy and misaligned. Uh, that nib, which is this nib here, uh, writes a 0 0.5 millimeter line which is a western fine and, or a Japanese uh, fine to medium as you can see I said that the tines on this pen are badly misaligned lots of adjustments and micro mesh and I threw it away get out and put the bobby calligraphy nib back into the pen and so we'll continue with the writing sample with the calligraphy nib the ink today is ferris wheel press stroke of midnight i thought i'd try this ink again as it does have a silver shimmer in it 
you can see on the bottom of the bottle there, there's that silvery kind of shimmer. And you shake it up. And I thought a broader, wetter nib might bring out some of that shimmer. Unfortunately, no matter how much ink I lay down on the page, the result is a rather flat blue-black that shades nicely, but is rather dry. Let's check the wetness here. Decently wet, this calligraphy nib. And as to line variation, well, that's what this nib is built for. And so it naturally gives you line variation because the vertical strokes are thin and the horizontal strokes are thick. And the lower your angle to the page, the thicker the line gets. The more vertical, the thinner the line gets. It's like writing with a paintbrush. It's very nice. I really enjoy it. Perhaps the dryness of the ink is why that shimmer is not showing up. I don't know. I'm no ink guru. The generic nibs uh, width, as I mentioned, was uh, 0 0.5 millimeters, uh, whereas this nib goes from 0 0.5 on the vertical to 0 0.7 on the horizontal, which makes it uh, a range of western fine to medium broad, or a Japanese fine medium to medium broad. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Reverse writing gets you a very, very thin, very, very dry line. But it's actually keeping up. It's not scratchy at all. And some quick writing. There's no trouble keeping up at all. So that's nice that that feed is actually keeping up with that calligraphy pen because the calligraphy pen, or sorry, the calligraphy nib is laying down a lot of ink. As you can see, like a paintbrush or a felt marker with this dry ink, it actually feels more like a felt marker, but a very interesting uh, pen and writing experience. I like it a lot. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, the pen is very comfortable when writing unposted. I like the section a lot, and it has a swappable number six size nib. This turned out to be the pen's best feature, as the generic nib I was provided was a dog. But as a man, you are barely passable. But as a woman, you are a dog. That's your opinion, big boy. I have a number of Pen BBS number six size steel nibs, and I could replace this one with any of them including my pen BBS calligraphy nibs. I like that I can take the piston out and clean the pen and put it back together again quickly and easily. If you don't have a 7.5 millimeter box wrench, you can buy this wrench tool for disassembling the Wing Sung 699 for a few bucks. The clip works well, and I like the ink explosion pattern on the pen. It comes in a few different colors. I believe it comes in a red, a green, this blue, and a matte black. It's very attractive. And to my dislikes, I think the pen is on the heavy side. It would have been nice if Majon had put some of their nice acrylics on this pen rather than this metal barrel and cap. I think that would have made the pen much more attractive. Something like this M800 in Galaxy, or this one in Emerald, or this one in Amber. You can see how beautiful those are. And I can just imagine this T5 with this Galaxy finish on it. The pen would be much lighter and much more attractive, in my opinion. As to whether this pen is a clone of the Aurora Optima, even though I've never held an Optima in my hand, I'm willing to bet that this Majon T5 is no closer to an Optima than this Jinhao 159 is to a Mont Blanc 149, or this Moonman T2 is to a stipula vontidu. Is the T5 worth 30 bucks? 
Yes, sir. Yup. Will it replace your $500 Aurora? No, sir, Bob. Nope. Nope. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus, I am starting to create content just for members. Each time I get a new fountain pen, I will put up an exclusive unboxing and first look video for channel members the day I get the pen, which is sometimes weeks before the review gets published. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.